Hello and welcome. I'm Dominic Hale, The Mining Journal. I'm here with Danielle Kayan, Principal Consultant for Mine Closure at SRK Consulting. SRK is an international consultancy providing advice and solutions to clients in the earth and water resource industries. Its services for mining projects encompass the entire mining life cycle. And today we're here to talk about optimizing mine closure outcomes. Danielle, welcome. It's good to have you here. Thank you, Dominic. SRK often speaks about progressive rehabilitation of a mine site. What do we mean by this? And why do internal key performance indicators sometimes work against it? Thanks, Dominic. Um, progressive rehabilitation um, is the process of rehabilitating a site over the life of the project instead of waiting till closure. This is this is a way that we aim to mitigate the environmental um, impacts. Of a, of a project sooner rather than later um, and restore that site to a safe and stable condition as quickly as we can. For the KPIs working against progressive rehab, traditionally we have seen a, a focus in production um, on short-term goals and financial performance. Um, your efficiency, efficiency, your production um, levels high, um, and when you have a mine manager that is pushing those production um, incentives um, and, and aiming for those KPIs, closure due to its nature of being a cost to the company rather than a revenue can be pushed to the side. Also, um, there is the risk of sterilisation of projects. Um, so they're always wanting to, to push the boundaries, get as much of the ore that's economic out of the ground as possible. Um, so there is, if we um, start going in and progressively rehabilitating, spending the money um, and then sterilising um, a resource and reserve, then they won't be able to go back in there and mine. And that's not what we're after when we're progressively rehab. Okay. And... So as for collaboration amongst the various stakeholders, are you seeing evidence of greater communication, information sharing and cooperation than may previously have been the case? What more do you think needs to be done on that front? Okay, um, we're definitely seeing um, some greater stakeholder, multi-collaborative stakeholder engagement um, within the realm that I have been working. Um, I have found that I am being brought in for um, my knowledge base and closure planning, and particularly I specialise in closure cost estimating. Um, I'm being brought in a lot earlier in the process um, on the projects that we have as um, to sound out some of those closure um, principles that would need to be applied, particularly at like scoping stage and so not just at the pre-feasibility stage anymore or um, order of magnitude, it's it's going that one step further at scoping. So the mining engineers are asking the questions earlier so that they're not designing something that um, will not actually um, be able to be progressed um, and, and actively looking at what the environmental implications um, are. I am finding particularly in the costing side, we're being brought in on more due diligences um, so that the financial um, backers are aware of, of what the closure implications are um, for these projects. So we're definitely seeing that happening um, and it's great to see. Um, we're getting more stakeholders around the table across multiple disciplines and different areas within the mining industry. Um, it's opening people to um, be thinking outside of the, the standard boxes that we always had for closure. Um, and there are projects out there that um, because we've changed the, the thought process on the end land use, um, that we can look at examples like putting renewables in as an end land use um, to continue the revenue production and can cover the costs of then doing some of the mitigation um, further down the track. Okay. Um, yeah. um, so uh, on that cost estimating side then, which you obviously have the expertise in, is digitization improving 
accuracy in the way many had hoped or anticipated? Um, it's definitely helping um, us get a clearer view of what's on the ground. There's a lot of times where you can't necessarily go out to site. So um, we can get that that overarching view of of what is out there. Um, and before we go, pre-look at all of the information, there's a lot more data and um, a lot clearer data available um, that can help with that. With technology itself, though, um, it's constantly changing. There's lots of new technology um, arriving. Some of the bigger tools that we're, we're utilising are um, the visualisation of mine sites. If we can then, we're able to um, show the site of what it could potentially look like at closure and then be able to take that out to our, um, our local communities and our TOs um, to, to show them what, what these options are um, and where we could be going. Um, we are seeing it um, helping us in our options analysis speed up some of the decisions that are being made because we have data at our fingertips that we can then um, model quicker and, and utilise for those closure planning processes. Um, but having said that, it always is still dependent on making sure you have the right decision makers who are understanding that data um, so that we can make the best decisions um, in that process. And it's an iterative process that we need to keep going back to and, and challenging and finding more information as the, um, the life of the mind goes along. Fantastic. Look, we've, we've talked about some of the material flat factors at play, Danielle, but I just want to ask you to round off psychologically to what degree has there been, would you say, a shift in the mining psyche whereby mine closure is, is coming to be seen as an opportunity as opposed to a cost to be endured by mining companies? Is there still a long way to go, do you think? Are we moving in the right direction? I think direction? we're moving in that direction. It, it depends on which company you're working for and who you have around the table. Um, but we are seeing if you're, if, if we have, the, um, the buy-in from the people around the table and those that are trained in integrated mine closure, their thought processes are slightly different. And we're seeing if you get the right mining engineers around the table, they are looking for those opportunities. Yes, it might be a longer haul at the beginning of the mine life, but it is actually reducing the liability at the end. So I, I do have clients that are actively looking for those opportunistic um, synergies between the, the operations and where there um, are opportunities to utilise material that's coming out of a pit to directly cover an old tailings facility or an old waste rock dump, um, reducing double hauls and actually just really thinking through that process. So we're starting to get there. There's also um, changes in technology have um, led to some people going back and mining old tailing stamps to help reduce the environmental liability of what was left behind. So there's there's lots of new and innovative technologies that are um, that are being utilised now and being pushing the boundaries so that we can start um, making sure that we have a sustainable long term approach to mine closure and that it's not just we'll leave that for the next person. Understood. Well, look, Danielle, thank you so much for your time and for your insights today, which have been eye-opening. I'm Dominic Hale for Mining Journal, and today I've been talking with Danielle Kyan, SRK Consulting's Principal Consultant for Mine Closure.